everyone. Now that the USL Championship season is all wrapped up and we're done with Hate Week, it's time to get back to the defunct series. Mars60 suggests we do a video on Hartford, Connecticut. So let's do so and analyze the only team to represent Hartford in the NFL, the Hartford Blues. The team was owned by George Mulligan, a English immigrant who became the leading sports promoter in Connecticut. George grew famous as a boxing promoter at the time and also sponsored bicycle races, professional football, and was reputed to be the owner of a popular speakeasy during Prohibition. The Blues were founded in 1924 as the Waterbury Blues in Waterbury, Connecticut. Their first two seasons, 1924 and 1925, they competed as an independent team, playing at Brasco Field and later Clarken Field. Mulligan sought out to sign several former Notre Dame players, including Harry Struldreher, the quarterback of the Four Horsemen. Mulligan would also acquire Jim Crowley from the Four Horsemen, but Crowley would leave the Blues after just one game. Crowley would return with Elmer Layden as the Four Horsemen reunited for one game in a 1925-13-6 loss to the NFL's Cleveland Bulldogs. The Blues also landed several other former Notre Dame alumni during these independent seasons who played alongside the Four Horsemen, such as Ed Hunsinger and Heck Garvey. And real quick, who are the Four Horsemen? Well, the Four Horsemen were a group of American football players at the University of Notre Dame under coach Newt Rockney, comprising of quarterback Harry Struldreher, left halfback Jim Crowley, right halfback Don Miller, and fullback Elmer Layden. They apparently tore it up back in the day, and during the three-year tenure of the Four Horsemen, Notre Dame only lost two games, in 1922 and 23, both to Nebraska in Lincoln. The Four Horsemen of Notre Dame should not be confused with other Four Horsemen, such as the Pro Wrestling Heel Stable, the four U.S. Army engineers who discovered the first correct basic strategy for blackjack, the West Indy cricket squads from the 70s and 80s, or the ones from the apocalypse. The Blues coach and captain these first two seasons was Dick McGrath, who played professionally for the Blues prior to the club's entry into the NFL. The Blues found success their first seasons with a record of seven wins, two losses, four ties, and claimed the 1924 state title. The following season, halfway through their schedule, the Blues moved to Clarkin Field and renamed to the Hartford Blues. They finished ten wins, two losses, and claimed the state title for a second time in 1925. The 1926 season, the Hartford Blues were invited to join the NFL and moved to the East Hartford Velodrome a bicycle track that could barely contain a football field and sat 8,000. Hartford's coach this year was a dentist named Jack Kyog, who only coached the Blues this one season. Unfortunately, they were unable to keep the horsemen together as Elmer Layden and Harry Struldreher left to play in Brooklyn. The Hartford Blues started their schedule with a preseason exhibition game, defeating the Brooklyn Naval Hospital 33-7. After this, the Blues faced their first NFL opponent, the New York Giants, and was shut out 21-0. The next three matches saw similar results, the Blues losing and unable to put any points on the board. The Blues won their first game October 24th, beating the Brooklyn Lions 16-6. The Blues' remaining season, they would alternate wins and losses, finishing their only NFL season in 13th place with a record of 3-7. After the Blues' 1926 season, the NFL's owners voted to streamline the league and cut back from 22 to 12 teams. As a result, half of the 1926 NFL teams were scrapped, including Hartford. In 1927, George Mulligan created a new semi-pro team known as the Hartford Giants and changed the team's colors from blue and white to black and orange. The Hartford Giants had many former Blues players and was coached by Vincent LaCava. Hartford returned to the independent circuit for their 1927 season and posted a record of seven wins and one loss and competed for the state title against All New Britain. However, the series was cancelled over some sort of dispute. After the 1927 season, the Hartford Giants folded, and football in Connecticut returned to local minor league teams and continued into the 1970s, with many of these teams still using the Blues and Giants name. Hartford's one player in the Pro Football Hall of Fame is Steve Owen who played for Hartford in 1925 and had an extensive playing and coaching career, including head coach of the New York Giants for 24 seasons, from 1930 to 1953. Later, Hartford hosted two arena football league teams, the Connecticut Coyotes and the New England Sea Wolves, and was teased with professional football when the UFL's New York Sentinels moved becoming the Hartford Colonels, who only played one season. Well, that's all for the Hartford Blues, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.